the Hollywood Oscars are coming up in uh, pretty soon, and there's two documentaries up for Oscars that have to do with Israel. So people are all excited, except they are part of the anti-Israel worldwide campaign of boycott, divest, and sanction. There are hatchet jobs in Israel, completely lies and untrue, and need to know about that. <coughs> the first is called The Gatekeepers, and it implies that Israel controlling the West Bank stands between terrorism and peace. And uh, Mara, who uh, did the MOVE documentary, believes that if Israel withdraws from Judea and Samaria, terrorism will subside and peace will break out. Well, first of all, Israel's offered to do that on numerous occasions. It would Barak, and uh, Arafat's response was to start an intifada. Second of all, Israel now cedes large portions, the majority of the land, to the Palestinians to govern themselves. But the problem of Israel turning it over and creating a Palestinian state is, first of all, you've got Gaza, which Israel completely withdrew from unilaterally, and now it's in the hands of the terrorist group Hamas, which says it wants to destroy Israel. And they are in cahoots with the, Pal the Fatah who control the West Bank. Uh, secondly, the West Bank had more uh, says he has no interest in a Jewish state. If they want to have another state that's not Jewish, next door, fine. Third, how can you possibly trust the Palestinians when Hamas is shooting all these rockets, and if Israel withdraws completely its defense forces from Judea and Samaria, they'll be within pistol range of Lod Air, El Al Airport. Lod Airport. The Palestinians uh, continue to teach violence in their schools and their summer camps. They have no interest in having peace with Israel. They have no interest in living in peace with Israel. And those lands belong to Israel by international law. It's quite clear. The Palestinian people anyway are a phony people. They're made completely made up. You show me one piece of evidence before 1900 or 1930 of the Palestinian people, any document, any coin, any flag, any word. The only Palestinians before 1930 were Jews. The Palestinians' post is today's Jerusalem post. It was all Jews. Palestine was a name given to the country by the Romans 2,000 years ago, and it's just a made-up people. They're, as, uh, as many Arabs have said, they're just Syrians, uh, Arab Jews from, uh, Arabs from the area. There's no Palestinian people. Now, I have many videos on this subject to clear up the lies of this dishonest documentary, The Gatekeepers. Uh, Palestinians don't want peace. You can go to YouTube and search Jew U 571 and 597 or the top 10 lies taught about Israel, Jew 556 or 557, the Israelis right to the land and Jew 243. Now, this movie ignores the history and context that blames is Israel for the Palestinian hostility and violence when Israel began administering the West Bank in 1967. Remember, from 1948 to 1967, Jordan controlled that land illegally, and they didn't do anything about cre creating a Palestinian state. Uh, this documentary completely glosses over the impact of the Second Intifada, where 1,100 Israelis were murdered. Uh, he, uh, he never talks about how Israelis have to fight terrorists who hide routinely among civilians. It doesn't deal with the Hamas's genocidal desires to destroy Israel. And it never, he never talks about how Israel has tried to do what the, uh, the Palestinians want, give them the West Bank, but they've always turned it down. Uh, and, and now the, the uh, Arabs living in Judea and Samaria, this ancient Jewish homeland, uh, which is called the West Bank by uh, much of the world, live the most free lives of any Arabs in the world. So this movie is complete garbage and just an anti-Israel hatchet job. The second one up for an Oscar, which is also an anti-Israel hatchet job, is Five Broken Cameras um, by Ahmed Barnett, a Palestinian. I'll read you a piece by Roz Rothstein about it. She said, It's manipulative narration and visual editing craft a story of Palestinian nonviolent resistance to Israel's security fence. But first, the film provides no context. Why is there a security fence? Because it's the only way to stop the Palestinian suicide bombers that killed hundreds and hundreds of Israelis before that security fence went up. America is talking about building a fence to stop uh, drugs coming in from Mexico. Doesn't, don't Israelis have a right to live security without being blown up by Palestinians? According to this film, evidently not. Second, the film ignores Palestinian terrorism against Israel. It's as if terrorism simply doesn't exist. Uh, the film downplays the harsh realities of life under Palestinian authority. The Palestinians govern these people. It's even it's much worse. 
uh, than uh, having a few checkpoints to make sure that terrorists are not getting into Israel. It's not about defense, this film. It's actually part of the ongoing effort to deny Israel's right to defend its citizens with nonviolent security measures like defense, according to Ralph Rothstein. Look, this is a tragic conflict, and Israel basically has just given up because they have no evidence that the Palestinians are interested at all in living in peace. They keep talking about no, no right to a Jewish state, the Jews were never there, lie, lie, lie. They use terrorism uh, to try and uh, kill Israelis, and they have shown no evidence of willing to live in peace with Israel. There is no partner for peace, and so the, 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 the Jews who desperately want peace see that they have nobody that they can make peace with. Judea and Samaria, by international law, belong to the Jewish people, belong to the state of Israel, and, uh, and simply the idea of transferring land and the hope of some kind of peace arrangement is a, is a delusion, which should never be. And these two movies, up for Oscars, which pretend to be about Israel, are really about the effort to destroy Israel and should be treated as such. I'll tell you one final story about how art is used as an anti-Jewish thing. Uh, some people told me they went to see a play recently, which was about the moral anguish a Jew had during the slave trade and how much they enjoyed it. And, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, that basically the message of that play is to try and say that Jews are responsible for the slave trade, which is a complete lie. That's what the anti-Semites say. There were a few Jews involved in uh, slave ownership, but the vast, but the overwhelming, by 99% of the people involved in getting the slaves over here were black Africans and mostly Muslims, and they're still involved in the slave trade today. And most of the slave owners, by far, 90, over 95%, were Christians, white Christians in the South. So to make a whole play about one uh, Jew who happened to be a slave owner, which is terrible and despicable, is uh, trying to shade the whole issue. It's one of the ways that they use art to try and uh, tell lies about the Jewish people and uh, to hurt Israel. Shalom.